Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to bring this video where I'm going to be going over three different reasons why you might want to use TypeScript when you're creating a React application. Before we get into the video, if you could leave a like and subscribe, I would massively appreciate it. This will help boost my videos and just promote it to more people and I'll be really grateful if we could do that. So um, with that in mind, let's get into the video. Okay, everyone. So there's actually three different um, points that I want to make with this video. So for each of those points, I'm going to give you guys some examples on um, why that would matter. Um, and the first one is this one over here, which is um, TypeScript will for sure make your app more safe. Now, when I say safe, I don't mean safe like um, your there's like people can can't won't be able to hack your website. That's not the kind of safe I'm talking about. I'm talking about um, type safety, which basically means that um, it will prevent you from or not prevent you, but it will most likely help you not get caught into issues where um, you're trying to access, for example, um, a field inside of an object that um, doesn't exist that is no. Now, this might seem like something so minuscule, um, compared to having to learn a whole new language, um, just for that, but it is actually extremely important. If you've used um, react in the past, and you've coded with JavaScript in the past, you might have dealt with an example like this, where um, we have some sort of um, data, for example, I called it user, um, I'm not using an actual um, API to test this, I'm just creating a fake data over here, you see that the user um, is a list of objects, and each object includes a name, a school, and the school um, has information about the school's name and the school's location, right? So imagine that this is um, something that you're getting back from uh, an API request. And what I want to do with this app is I want to be able to uh, loop through this list. And for each element in the list, I want to display the name of this of the person and the name of the school, right? So in JavaScript, you would probably come over here and say um, that you want to display the user dot school to get the school name, and then say dot name. But there's an issue with this. If you're not using TypeScript, it will allow you to create an application that um, tries to access the user dot school dot name, when in fact, there's one of the elements in the list where school is not is null, which means you can't access the name. Because if you're trying to access the name of uh, or trying to access a field of an object that is null, it will cause an issue with your application, which means it will basically break your react app, the user will see an error message, which is definitely something you don't want the user to see. Um, so you definitely don't want this to happen. But with TypeScript, it recognizes automatically that um, one of the options can be no, for example, it's cool. And uh, if I try to finish this off like this, it will put a question mark over here. And if you know, if you've seen a video of mine in the past, where I go over um, optional chaining, basically, what this means is, uh, it's just saying that it will only access name if school is no. So if you're not using TypeScript, you would be able to do something like this. But when you're using TypeScript, it lets you know that um, the object ha can be possibly no, meaning that it will help you prevent so many issues in the future, where you're trying to do something like this, and you don't know why your your code is breaking, um, because it will just show you directly. This works perfectly when you're getting um, data from the backend, because um, you ha will have you'll be forced to specify what kind of data you're getting back, which means that um, if someone is working on the back end, and someone is working in the front end, they will need to communicate really well with each other so that the front end knows exactly what it's getting so that this kind of situations never occur again. So this is the kind of safe aspect of TypeScript, it goes way further than this. Um, however, uh, this is the main like point of it, right? It will let you know whenever you're making some sort of stupid mistake like this before you you'll spend like three hours trying to debug why um, your screen is breaking. So uh, this is the first point that I wanted to make the TypeScript it is safe. And it is definitely just worth it to use it just by this point alone. So the second um, point that I wanted to talk about is the fact that uh, TypeScript in react will help you organize your code better. And what I mean by that is whenever you're working with an application, uh, which has multiple components, um, it is very easy for you to create a component that if someone else is trying to look at it, who have never worked in your code base before, um, and they look at your component, they'll, they'll probably get confused. The reason for that is because um, 
components require, especially complex components, requires um, some props or uh, information that they get based on their parents. So um, if you look at one specific component without really knowing what um, where it's called or what the parent um, is doing, then it's very easy to get very confused and your component will kind of look very messy. TypeScript comes in because it forces you to declare the type of your props. So what do I mean by that? Um, we have this example over here, which obviously is fake, but it's an example. Um, we have a component called complex component, and it has some props, right? Like normally you would create in a normal JavaScript application. Then what it does is it first um, grabs a, a specific title, like a, a, part, a prop called title from the props object, um, and tries to display it. Then it does the same thing for description. And for an example, a little bit more complex, we have some sort of function that you can get from the props that will be passed down called get name. And when you click on this button, we're calling this function, this function is returning a name, and you're just, I don't know, doing something with that value that you get back from that function. Like in our case, we're just creating a state called name and setting it and display it in the screen. So you can see it's not an overly complex component. It's just an example. But um, there's many different aspects to the prop object over here at the top, which we need to address. The first thing is, we need to describe how this looks because someone who is looking at this component for the first time will get really confused. Because first of all, they don't know what name what, the, what is a type of name, right? Name can be anything. Um, obviously, we're, we're setting it to be a string because we declare our state is equal to be a string. But it can literally be anything when we are not sure of it, right? Um, title and description, obviously, we, we can assume it's a string, but we don't we're not sure. And not to mention the fact that um, there can be more props to this component that we we don't know of, right? So what would we have to do if we're using TypeScript? Well, we would have to declare what is known as an interface over here at the top, and we'll just say interface, and then call it, for example, props, and an interface, it's it's kind of like a way for you to describe how an object will look, right? And props is an object because it includes all the different props you're passing down through the component. Um, in our case over here, we have three different properties that we want to get back um, from props, right? We want a title. So we would describe the title and the type would be a string. Um, then we're going to have a description, which would obviously um, also be a string. And then finally, we would have a get name function, right? Because we're declaring that um, that we need this function. So to declare that your type is a function, you just say the name of the function, then you open and close parentheses, you also set the return type of this function, which is important for our case, because we are getting back something from the function, right? Right now, if you hover over this, it will say that the name is any and any is a type in TypeScript, which declares that it doesn't know what its type is, it basically can be anything, which is bad for us. So we specify over here at the top, that it will return always a string, so that we know that name will become a string, I'll show you when we set the props to be this type. Um, so what we do now is we just grab, grab the props interface, and we just say that this components props will be of this um, model or of this structure. And now you see all of our, our, our errors go away. Not only that, but if we hover over any of the props, we'll see its type being displayed over here, right? And the one the, the get name function now says that it returns a string meaning that name now is a string and not of any type, which is amazing, right? There's also a point I wanted to show which kind of um, goes back to what we mentioned of type safety, you can declare um, some types, some props to be, for example, um, optional. So if we if we have this component, and we use it many times, but not always, you'll get the get name function, you can put a question mark over here. And it will automatically um, give us an error because what we're doing is we're trying to access the get name function from the props object, when we just said that it can be optional, meaning you can simply not give it to the props. So props might not have a get name function. So what you do is you just come over here, because props will always exist. So we don't put a question mark behind props, this won't help us at all. Because the problem here is not that props will not will maybe won't exist. The issue is that getting get name might not exist, and we're calling it. So what we can do is instead of putting the question mark here, we can put it over here, and put a dot right after I know it looks kind of ugly, but this is how it, it works with JavaScript and TypeScript. And what we're saying here is, we're trying to access the get name property out of the props. And get name will always exist. Um, it's not like it's it can be null. 
but it can be undefined, meaning that it won't have anything like it will, it will exist, but it won't have anything with it, right? I hope that makes sense. So we're just calling it if it actually has um, a function, right? And now you see, it's giving us another error, right? Because name now might be undefined as well. Because if we if, if the get name isn't passed, then this doesn't make sense, right? Name will not get we won't return a name. So we're setting name to be equal to undefined, possibly. So with TypeScript, it will let us know, and we have to fix, we could do something like, um, if name is undefined, then just just set it to an empty string, right? So you can see, it, it helps us in a chain of events, understand how uh, our application actually works, and how our types should be defined. Um, a minor change in your props, for example, setting one of them as optional, can cause a chain of events that uh, will show you how unsafe your application is. Okay, so for the third um, point that I want to make, um, I just am using the same example as before, but I added some new types, uh, a new actually a new um, key or a new field into our props, right? Now, what I want to talk about is the fact that TypeScript will just give you amazing auto completion. Um, for example, uh, if we have a prop, which it will get a user, right? User can have multiple fields, um, including one of them, which is of type country, which is another type that we create, right? So if I wanted to access the, the name of the country of a specific user in an application, in JavaScript, it won't know what like what to access because it is JavaScript, you don't define the what what type each field is. But with TypeScript, I could come here and just auto complete it um, really easily, I can say something like I'm going to grab the props, and it will when I put the dot, it will immediately give us all the options we can have. Then I'm going to say I want user, then I want to put another dot, and it will give us all the options we can get, then I'll just put country, and then the name of the country, right? And it will just um, auto complete everything for us. Now this might seem minor, but I love it. Um, I, I hate when I'm using JavaScript, and I have to manually assume that what I'm the object values and keys that I'm accessing um, are actually in the object or if they make sense. Um, sometimes I just miss like write a, a, an element, I could just come over here and write um, country like this. And it won't give us a red squiggly line in JavaScript because uh, we didn't define that uh, this isn't a field in the user object. So that's a great point, in my opinion, because a lot of people don't understand how much time you save when you're doing something like this. So that was the third point I wanted to talk about. And let's get to the last one. So that was the third point I really wanted to talk about. But I also want to mention one last thing. I know for a fact that the reason why some people are trying to learn TypeScript or most people why they decide to learn TypeScript is not because um, they are interested in learning, not because of the reasons I just listed out or because they want to make their application safer. It's because they know that it is required for a job. That was the whole reason why I learned TypeScript, I knew that I had to learn it because um, jobs would ask me um, if I knew TypeScript, and that I would have to use it in an actual job, right? Although I don't like that approach, even though I was I did it that way too. Um, it is something important to point out, if you want a job, you will use TypeScript. And if a job doesn't use TypeScript and uses JavaScript for an application in react, I would probably say it's not a really good job. Obviously, I'm generalizing a lot here, because TypeScript is a lot newer than JavaScript. And there's a lot of code bases out there that uses JavaScript with react, um, just because in, they started that way. And um, it now it's too expensive to migrate to TypeScript. But um, at the same time, I'll say to beware, um, TypeScript needs to be used in a actual real application, because the benefits are way more than the the cost, which, in my opinion, the cost is just a, a slight increase in amount of time you, you spend writing your components, because you need to define the types, and also the learning curve, which even is isn't even that big, if you know JavaScript, if you want to check out how to learn TypeScript, if when you already know JavaScript, or how to learn TypeScript, if you already know react, check out my two videos where I explain how, um, how I learned and actually everything you need to know, in order to say that you know how to create react applications using TypeScript. So that's basically it. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. As you can see, it's been a while since I've actually made a video where I show my face. And I'm going to be doing a lot more of this because I feel like I can talk better to you guys. And I just never had a camera. So I bought a camera for this. And um, let me know what you guys think of the video. And yeah, that's basically it. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I see you guys next time.